Morning, just a quick revision on this one I did yesterday of the Wandle. I put all these cloud, these uh, tree shadows across here but I forgot to put the shadows across the water. I don't think they would have been obvious on the day because I've, I've overdone this, I forgot to put the green in as well but but uh, I'll try not to ruin it because you seem to like it especially on Facebook it's getting quite popular. So I'll just mix up a bit of light red and a bit of, bit of ultramarine but very weak and I'll just put this in across to, to link up and justify these shadowy areas and line it up with um, the, the, the banks Just a little bit at the top here. Okay, so that 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 will do for that. Right, using my number eight sable, lovely brush. I've got two of these. I'm glad I did two. I'll probably use that far more than the number fourteen that I bought as well. But for twenty-five pounds, the Kalinsky sable for one so large is. Uh, Sensational in my way of thinking. So, uh, put that aside. Harry doesn't come up, that's the cat. Come up and tread all over it. Um, now, improvising, I was asked, what do I mean by improvising in watercolour? That was on Facebook. And what I mean by improvising is making it up as I go. Although I'm, I'm working from a, a great experience of, of doing these things. But I won't say that I've got a very good imagination or can I help or in holding uh, imaginary views in my, my head or making them up in my head. But um, there are things that I like to do in a painting and put in because this is personal to me. I like to put in trees, obviously. I spent years trying to do shorthand, find a shorthand for trees. And the greatest painter for me, for the trees that I like doing, was Roland Hilda. I love, I love his, his balloons on his winter trees. <coughs> Abel Wesson for simplicity, lovely profound simplicity, as he would say, bags of damn all. Seago for his wonderful Norfolk views and Venice. But I like simple stuff. It's, it's, it's taking a, a complicated subject, even though it might be nondescript, like I did yesterday, the Ashdown, well I called it the Ashdown Forest. I, I, I often stop my car on the A22 in the big car parks either side of the road and go and take some photographs and just make things up from them. But, but I hope I try to, to um, invent, improvise views that are typically British when I say British, I mean English mainly because I'm down in the south of England. I don't go up north very often. So I'll wet the paper all over and we're going to do another, another sort of impression of English landscape. Okay, so I'll just bring the, the hairs of the brush together again. We're putting a bit of bit of warming, so yeah, the usual, bit of alizarin in there as well, bit of a blush of, we could put a bit of red in there. Okay, now the day today uh, has been a bit of sunshine, clouds, but it's raining now, a lot of rain to come, so I do like doing my skies, so I'm going to a bit of bit of red, bit of alizarin, bit of blue, bit of Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey, I believe, is a mixture of alizarin crimson, ultramarine and black. I don't know which black, and I've got here, sticking out my ache. So, I'll paint today's sky that I can see out of my window. A bit, bit of red in it.
So that's more or less the, the sky today. B bit of light and a lot of cloud. I'm just looking through my Velux windows at all this. Okay, so we've got some movement sweeping across here. And I'll now put in a bit of a background. Again, it's very similar to what I did yesterday, I think, the way it's going. Uh, so I'll use that, colour those colours, and put a bit of a background. some of this where it's not quite showing right put a bit of a sienna burnt sienna a bit of yellow warming as we're coming into the foreground. Just re clip the paper. I didn't soak the paper, it, it's uh, drying out already. So we put a bit of burnt umber in there. A bit of dry brushes, put a bit of a direction. Burnt sienna mixes very well with Payne's Grey. I didn't use Payne's Grey yesterday. No. Putting it in here, I can put a pathway through there. So quickly here, that's drying. I'll dry, I'll dry that off. Right, hold on to your ears. Ready, go. That's enough. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll use this. No, I'll, mm, I was in two minds to use a, a sable, but I want some. No, I'll use the hake. I'll carry on with the hake for the moment. Let's just put in some distant, distant trees. Just a bit warm, warmer, and it's becoming a bit closer. Right, carry on now on this ridge.
Right, okay. So we've lost more or less the distant hills here. It's sort of dried in, but that's okay. I'm not really thinking too much about what to do next. I'm just letting the brush dot about the paper. So we'll put in some more of these hedgerows. So we're creating sort of a Dartmoor type of scene here. Okay, I hope I'm not masking you with my head. <coughs> so these could be Okay. Now a little goes a long way and I'm just in danger of overdoing that. And now um, we can come down and put in some heavier stuff now. Outcrops of course. I'll use grey this time. Thick, thick paint. Just on that ridge there. Let's warm it up a bit with the burnt sienna. So what I'm trying to do is see what it seems. I'm just in my improvising. I'm just trying to create an impression of great space. And then we'll add a bit, a bit more blue in there. And so we can Disappearing over the, uh, over the hills, over the plain. You can do very fine work with the uh, with the hake. Okay. And then we'll uh, come in with some good good darks in here now. Usually, these sort of impressionist. Let's get, get at least one unlike. Now we're dark. Right, I'll just replay it. Okay. Mm. Well, I can put some uh, some wall stuff in there, I think.
just scraping out some loose stones or some dry stone walling. But I know I usually cover this with my fingers, but there's nothing magical or mysterious about it. I'm just scraping it off the paint. Just to show, and then do some uh, some chunks in the wet paint. If you have difficulty with, with this and your fingernail, it's because your, the, your paint is too wet. But it just backfills into the uh, groove that you've made. And do something like this. Okay. Uh, I might put some little sheep here if I'm, I'm grazing on there. Uh, Right, so what we've got here is, is a cloud shadow here, but these fields here seem to be in the sunlight coming through these sort of gaps, so we'll keep that as it is. Now let's just a bit of texture in here. Some rough ground. Good texture. Right, we'll do a bit of a uh, bit of rigor work on there with with this fine brush here. Just a bit of grey, a bit of um, lemon yellow and a bit of sienna. And you can do a lot of impressionist foreground here, making it look as if there's a lot going on, but, but there isn't. Just creating an impression. Okay. Uh, so if I don't put any figures in there. Right, I'll uh, put a bit of a warmer bit of stuff in there. Right, now some faint sheep. Just so put them in, in sort of a, a grey, very sort of grey. Bit, so. These, I'm telling you these are sheep, so your brain will then interpret them as livestock. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to do any more than that. Um, I think we could put a, we could put a tree up there. I'm, I'm going to use the, I can use this brush, I'm determined to use it. So, a um, bit of umber. 
bit of blue. So we'll, we'll put a tree up here. Um, that's quite, that's, if I put a tree in here I'm going to have to make it quite large. But what I, I want it to It's a bit stronger than that. I think I've probably ruined it. I'm going to take it up a bit higher, a bit bluer. Maybe I was going a bit too far. Okay, let's put in some nice dark green now. Okay, so we've got sort of uh, ivy. Let's get some good shadow in there. Right. That's ruined it enough. So let's... Uh, Put in a bit of this and just a touch of Okay, that, that'll do. How are we doing? Right, okay. I think we need to enhance the top of these a bit to get them going down the hill a little bit. I will do that. Right, okay, that's that's a bit better. Uh, now that really doesn't sort of connect. So um, it's like a picture in two halves really. Let's just go a little bit harder stuff here. Okay, I can't do much more than that. I'm going to sign it, put it in a mount, and we'll, we'll call the start more. Or more, more land, English more land, English more. Always sign your work. Right. I'll use the ivory mountain that one. I'll smith a bit. There we are, I think they're not too bad. <coughs> Let's bring the camera over.
and we'll zoom in and just go around. So there are my distant hills. These here, they're supposed to be hills, they just went a bit light or soaked in a bit, but that's okay because that's in, in the rain. So we've got rain and sunshine on this one. Come across to the other side. That's where they've disappeared. They're a little bit stronger there. And then we'll come down into the middle distance and come, come across. Sorry, my camera's on this little tripod. A uh, bit of stone work there. Coming across. And down there. Right, let's come out and we'll just ponder it for a moment. If you have any questions about it, just leave a comment. Well, there's a lot of spaces. It's, it is bags of damn all, I have to say, but it's a good exercise for me as well. Trying to make realistic foregrounds with just a few strokes of the brush. Have a go yourself and see how you get on. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.